Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, it keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. Yes, in every generation on the earth, God sends special messengers with unique messages to fulfill His word in their dispensation. Whether through the Emancipator, church services, special conferences like the New Christian Conference or the Good Life Devotion, carefully listen, watch and read the message of life and of the divinity of the church ministered by Dr. David Bindan as ordained by God in the scriptures to mature the body of Christ into the full measure of the stature of Christ. Dr. David Bindan taking us on our journey in Christ into sinlessness, sicklessness, deathlessness, lacklessness and leaving us manifested sons of God to the glory of our Father. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Bindon on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into the divine life experience of sinless holiness, incorruptible health, deathlessness, and reigning in life as a son of God in the full measure of the stature of Christ. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Once again, I welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Glad Devotion. I believe by now you know it's a daily devotional teaching. It is to give you spiritual substance by which the Holy Ghost will bring you to a place of conviction that the Lord Jesus is indeed the Son of God, so that by believing, you can receive eternal life and become a son, a daughter of God. Also, the teachings are here to mature us until we arrive at the full measure of the stature of Christ, make us more effective in the work of the ministry. We have been dealing with the subject of the heavenly language. In other words, the subject of speaking in other tongues or praying in other tongues. And in our just past episode, we understood that it is a heavenly language. It's a language, but it belongs to beings of the heavenly kind. And we are talking specifically of beings of the family of God Almighty, our Father, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We said that anyone that is born again is truly born of God and therefore has become a partaker of the divine nature. He's in the family of God. And beings of a unique class have a means of fellowship through communication, and most of the times it is done through a language. So speaking in other tongues is the language of beings of the divine kind. Because it is a language of a different kind of beings, it is not easily understood by the human understanding. So even the one praying it or speaking it cannot understand it from the human perspective. It has to be revealed or interpreted to him. So someone say, oh, I don't want to speak something that I don't understand. Yeah, you are just blocking yourself. It's a heavenly language. Which understanding do you mean? If you want to understand it by the human understanding, you can because it's not a human language. But you can understand it in the spirit. The Bible says that if you pray, pray to understand or pray to interpret. God can give you insight into what you are saying. In other words, the insight can now rise up from your spirit into your understanding. Are you following? All right. So we delved into that in our first episode yesterday. And today we're going to move forward. And our topic today is relax. It is scriptural. The heavenly language and speaking it is scriptural. But just before we zoom in into the content of that teaching, I would like to remind you that this is the OJ Heed Week our journey into health, incorruption, and deathlessness. Listen to this. 
if Jesus came into this world today and he healed everyone that is sick right now, by tomorrow, almost the same number will be sick. Because someone was just on his way to being sick tomorrow. If you raise all those that are dead right now and then they came back to life, by tomorrow we may have the same number of people dead in the mortuaries. Why? Somebody was just on his way to death. So the ultimate goal of healing is not that there will be healings all the time in this world. It is to bring mankind into incorruption. The ultimate goal of raising the dead is to bring mankind into deathlessness. And the Bible makes it clear that there is a generation in which death will be eradicated. He said the last enemy to be destroyed, katagio, rendered useless and inactive, is the enemy death. This is the journey we have begun on. And you have to be there, either on site or online. You don't need to be sick to be there. If you're experiencing sickness physically also, you can come. As you just sit down to receive the word, we learned in the previous episode that the method is that as you receive the word, the consciousness of disease disappears and you realize your health state. Make sure you plan. It's just about three days from today, coming Friday, and make an appointment with this month's OJ here. Remember, it comes every third Friday of every month. Relax. It is scriptural. It's our topic. Father, we thank you. We celebrate you for the joy of feasting in your word, even at this point, in the name of our dear brother Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful viewer, wonderful listener, wonderful reader, depending on the platform. When it comes to speaking in other tongues, relax. I know people who are thinking they are intellectuals and enlightened, seem to have a lot of challenges with other tongues, even Christians. But you need to know that God's intelligence is not a human intelligence. If your being an intellectual or enlightened begins to make you stand against scriptural provision for your life, that intelligence is now corrupt. Spiritual things don't make sense. That is why it's not with the mind that you believe. I would say that it is with the heart a man believeth. But whether something appears to be physically intelligent or not should not be the reason why you subscribe to it or not. It is whether or not the scriptures teach so. That should be your reason. So if you say, as for me, I don't want to do anything with other tongues, you should have proven that other tongues are not supposed to be spoken from the Bible. But if the Bible says you should speak it, and because those who speak it sound like they are a group of people who are not enlightened and all that for you, you miss it. You are missing out on something great. That shouldn't be your portion. So today we want you to relax. And we're going to show you that speaking in other tongues, praying in other tongues, making all trances in the heavenly language is scriptural. Let's take off. I'm going to show you about three or four reasons why we are saying that speaking in other tongues is scriptural. Remember, I told you in the first episode, this is a basic subject, but we have to go back there because our viewers are varied. And while we are moving forward in the advance truth, we often have to come back again to re-empower people to ensure that the basics and the foundations are straightened out. Isaiah chapter 28, we're going to read from the 11th into the 12th verse. Isaiah 28, 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. With stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. He's saying, God is giving us a message ahead in Isaiah that there was going to come a time that God was going to speak to his people, but not in the language of the prophet. Maybe the prophet is, let's say, a Jew. He would have come and spoken in Jew. The prophet is, let's say, 
uh, maybe an American who have come to speak in American language. If you are maybe a Ghanaian who have come to speak in a Ghanaian language. But this time, the prophet is not coming to speak in a Ghanaian language, in an American language, or maybe a Chinese language. He's coming to speak with stammering lips and another tongue. Hmm. And if you care to know the meaning of stammering lips, it's like a foreign tongue, the tongue of a mocker. <laughs> Something that looks like a, a play of a buffoonery. Like somebody who's making a mockery. So you see, these things perfectly describe the way tongues appear right now. When you pass and somebody is speaking, you're just like, what is he doing? I remember one time I was praying. I was praying like several hours. And I think after I got past the 12th hour of prayer, I kept on praying and then suddenly a voice, you know, when you're still maturing, the devil can speak even while you're praying. And it's like, ah, look at you. An intelligent person, a doctor like you, and you're doing this. What's the meaning of all this? And instantly I knew that this wasn't the voice of God. And I always they remember that thing and I smile. You see, so if you are not smart, you hear somebody speaking in terms like, what kind of thing is he doing? Is this thing meaningful? It, it sounds like a play of buffoonery. But that's what the Bible says. It says with a stammering lip. Like something like a foreign mocker. I will speak to them. Then he said, in another tongue. And that means um, a strange tongue. A tongue that is not their natural language. And he says something powerful about that. He says, when he begins to speak to his people this way, instead of maybe speaking Ghanaian language, speak American language, speaking Chinese language, if he begins to speak in this tamarind lip to the people, he says that this is the rest, ah, yeah, 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 wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they will not hear. I, I don't want to put a card before the horse. We'll come to why speaking in tongues is so powerful. All right, let's read our introduction and see how we proceed. We said here that if sons of God will approach the scriptures with no preconceived mindsets and with the author of the scripture, that is the Holy Spirit, they would realize that there is really no contention concerning speaking in other tongues. If you have had any questions or contentions in your mind concerning other tongues or the heavenly language, just relax because other tongues are scriptural. Just relax because other tongues are scriptural. Now I'm going to take you on a journey of three or four points showing you why other tongues are scriptural. Even if there are two, but in a matter of two or three witnesses, something is established. But I'm going to go on break here so that when I come back, we'll go one, two, three and go without break again. I'll be right back after this break. The final global movement brings the whole world, our journey into health, in corruption, and deathlessness. O.J. Hip. While preparing the whole world to step into this state of incorruptible health, he blessed the world with the church by giving the church various means of healing. By faith, by laying of hands, anointing with oil, and uh, healing gifts and all that. But one of those means that he has given to me to bring to the world is to help people be restored to their state of health through the word. And this is what we're going to bring into the whole world in what we call our journey into health, incorruption, and deadness. Our journey into hell, in corruption and deathlessness with Dr. David Pindan comes off this Friday at 3 p.m. Venue is the Good Life Center 2, Kolegono. Join live on David Bindan Live on Facebook and YouTube and also available for a later listen on Dr. Bindan Podcast. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.
Praise the Lord. All right, so why are other tongues, or why is the heavenly language speaking it? Why is it scriptural? Number one, it was foretold. We just read that in Isaiah chapter 28 from verse 11. It says, for with stammering lips and other tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest, where would ye may cause the weary to rest? And this is the refreshing, yet they will not hear. So other tongues are scriptural because it was prophesied in the Old Testament that there will come a dispensation, an age in which God will speak to people, but not through their normal language, but through a stammering lip, through the heavenly language. So if we are speaking in other tongues today, it is because we are in that season that was foretold in days past. It is scriptural. The Bible says that there will come these days when God will speak to people through other tongues. And in those days, we now have, and we have known much more, that it was not just only about speaking to people, but also being equipped with the ability to commune with God as divine beings. Because yesterday, our main scripture, 1 Corinthians 14, 2 said, For he that speaketh in an own tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. And this is scripture. So in this age, when the speaking of other tongues is now here, it is not only God speaking to people, but we now also have the privilege of communing with our Father in that mysterious region of other tongues. Oh, glory to God. So number one, speaking in other tongues, communicating in the heavenly language, is scriptural because it was foretold. Number two, speaking in other tongues is scriptural because Jesus said, we will speak in other tongues. If you don't listen to Isaiah, and if you decide not to listen to him, you may be correct because it is scriptural somehow, but you can't refuse to listen to Jesus. Moses prophesied about Jesus, and it was the father that spoke. He said, I'm saying something that they can't get, and they say, I shouldn't speak, don't worry. I'm going to raise a prophet from among them like you. And I'll put my words in his mouth. And anyone who refuses to hear that prophet is in danger. So if you say, oh, I don't want to hear Isaiah, no problem. Now let's come to Jesus. If you refuse to hear Jesus, it's a higher matter. What did Jesus say about other tongues? Mark chapter 16. So if Jesus said it, we might as well just end the discussion. It is scriptural. <laughs> Let me just take it from 50 so that you can get a whole context. It says that, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Wow. Hey, this scripture is pulling me, but I will contain myself. Did you see that he didn't say preach the gospel only to men? Many don't know that the dimension of preaching the gospel to every creature is part of our commission. This is why the expectation of creature is waiting for our manifestation. They are waiting to hear the gospel from us. So that they'll be liberated from the bondage of corruption into our glorious liberty. So we are not running away to any place until creation has also experienced the liberty of Christ. In a way. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17. So when someone believes, what happens? You'll be saved. After being saved, uh huh. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Sign number one in my name, they shall cast out devils. Therefore, every Christian is a devil caster. Hmm. Number two, they shall speak with new tongues. That's the second sign. And he went ahead and listed many more, but I've emphasis on the new tongues. So Jesus said it. While he was sharing this, he had just risen from the dead and was commissioning them. But the Holy Ghost hadn't come to make being born again ready. But he knew that was going to happen. And he said, there was going to come a time soon. And when they went around preaching the gospel, people would believe. And if those who believed were going to be saved. And if they got saved, they were going to have the ability to cast out demons. And number two, they were going to have the ability to speak with new tongues. So Jesus said it, and that is why we speak with new tongues. Jesus said we will, and that is why we do. So if you desire to speak with other tongues, it is scriptural. Don't be limited by, oh, my denomination says this, this person says that. No, I had those challenges while I was growing up. 
um, came into being around 1994. Went to secondary school, finished around 98. Went to somewhere else to go and do, we used to call those days people teaching. Around 99, I ran into a friend who was into this denomination that they didn't believe in tongues. And his father was a pastor. And he talked me out of tongues. He made me know that it was demonic, it wasn't correct. You know, I didn't know much in the scriptures. And because his father was a pastor, I said, well, he's a pastor's son, and so he knows more. So I, I was praying and wanted to pray in tongues. I felt ashamed, I felt some way, and I kept resisting the Holy Ghost until I couldn't speak in tongues anymore. Until I came to the university, and then we went for one teaching. Somebody came to teach us on this again. Wow! That evening, I went behind the, 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 the hall. I remember it's Commonwealth Hall in the University of Ghana. And that night, I began to flow in other tongues. You see, so you can allow people to talk you out of it. You can allow your church to drain it. But it is not of God. Do what the scriptures say. Okay? When it comes to being born again, there are some things that are son of God things. They are not family things. They are not church things. It is you. If you are not born again, you can say, because I'm in this church. I'm not born again, but I'm in this church. That's not going to help you. Do what the scriptures say. And if the church is scriptural, it will follow what the scriptures say. Praise the Lord. All right, so second reason, Jesus said we will speak in tongues, and that is why we speak. Hallelujah. Third reason, the early church spoke in tongues. The church's foundation, they spoke in tongues. All the way from Acts 2. If you read from uh, verse 1 to 4, but because of time, I'm going to read just verse 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were all filled. Not some and some left. So if on the day of Pentecost all were filled, and the Bible tells us in every place of the account of the Spirit falling on them, and I will explain that later, they all spoke in tongues. So if we are all believers today, why should some be speaking and some not be speaking? The early church, they all spoke in tongues. In Cornelius' house, when Peter was preaching, in Acts chapter um, 10, let's take a read at verse 44. It says that, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter and then he continued from verse 47. So while Peter was speaking, children, elderly men, whatever, the Holy Ghost felt. This wasn't like Peter blowing the wind. This was the Holy Ghost himself, Papa Holy Ghost himself came on them and they all were filled in other tongues. So which Christian are you today? As I prophesied it, Jesus said we will. In the early church they spoke. You can extend it. Even look at later comments in the early church like Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul spoke in tongues. To the extent that he said in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, he says that he spoke in tongues more than they all. And if you look at Acts 19, where he went to Ephesus, let me read that quickly for a round of. In the book of um, Acts, the 19th chapter, verse 1, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. <laughs> Paul met them and he heard them talking about a lot of things where gossiping, politics, football. He looked at them and said, You guys, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Because when somebody is full of the Holy Ghost and you meet him, you know. Wow. So they said they've not even heard of the Holy Ghost. So he asked them further from verse 3. He realized that they hadn't even heard the proper gospel. It was all about John's baptism. He preached to them. They got born again. And then he baptized them into water. Now verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost again. You see, not that Paul just blew a wind. The Papa Holy Ghost again came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. So in all the cases in the early church, when it was the true Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues. So which Holy Ghost is on somebody today that he doesn't speak in tongues? If he did that in the early church, the same Holy Ghost, and the scripture hasn't told us that it has stopped yet, then it is happening today. So I've just given you about four, right? Yes, it was foretold. Jesus said it. The early church spoke it. 
We also continue later in the church. Apostle Paul and Simple, they also spoke when the Holy Ghost filled them. Now, we taught you some times ago when we were talking to you about gifts, and we said that the gifts of the Spirit will cease, and uh, the, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that at their tongues they will cease. Okay? These are tongues that are gifts. But tongues as a language for communication in the Godhead, you are forever divine. Except you denounce Jesus, they are not going to cease. So you can't say, okay, tongue cease with the early apostles. No. Gifts are going to cease with maturity, but communication and fellowship is not going to cease. Oh, praise God. Did you get that? So relax. Speaking in other tongues is scriptural. Why? It was prophesied. Jesus said it. Early church spoke it. Later people spoke it. And we speak tongues today. Father, we thank you for the light of your word in the name of Jesus. Have you been watching us? It all begins by becoming a son of God. Speaking in other tongues is not for people who are not born again. It's a family thing. You have to be a member of the God kind. You have to be someone who is born again. How do you get born again? Believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this world and died. And by his death and resurrection, he reconciled mankind to the Father and made eternal life available for anyone who is willing to receive and become born of God. And if you are willing and you receive him right now, you'll be born of God. Have you done that? Then you have been born again. But I want to help you by helping you make a confession that will let you always remember, have it in your consciousness that I got born again today. If you want to do that, I can say this after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you that finally I have believed today that you are the son of God who died. You are raised from the dead. And by this, you reconciled the world to the Father. You ascended into heaven. You are Lord. By this belief, I have received eternal life and I am born again. Hallelujah. You done it with all your heart. It is established in you and in your consciousness. You know that you know that you are born again. Make sure you call us. We'll help you materials. I'll help you to grow. Get planted in the Bible teaching and practicing church. Remain and grow in that fellowship until Jesus comes. We're going to meet you in our next episode. i take a look at this subject matter from another light. Until then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.